Hi everyone, Emma here. I am going to make a bracelet that should be a pretty simple bracelet. This is a bracelet called Floral Chain Bracelet Tutorial from Gina at GGC's Beginning Beater. You should definitely check out her channel. She has a lot of really simple uh, bracelets that you can make for the beginner. So I thought I would see what we can do with that. So what you need is some six pound, this is what I'm using, six pound fire line, but I'm sure you can use whatever uh, beading uh, string that you normally use. Um, you also need a toggle clasp or some type of closure. You need, um, she does suggest you can use different type of beads. I have four millimeter turquoise uh, bicones. These are Swarovski's and they're double AB and I'll, I'll give you a closer look as we get down the line here. Then I have some 11-0 um, Toho metallic hematite seed beads and then I have the 8 millimeter metallic hematite seed beads and you need an alternate 11-0 seed bead and that's to when we create the flowers uh, with these bicones, you're going to use one of these for the middle of the flower. So I'll put those aside for now. You need your scissors, of course, and a needle. So I have a collapsible needle, which will easily go through all of these. And let's get started. So you need two 11 O's, two 8 O's, two 11 O's and two more 8 O's and let me enlarge this so you can see a little better there we go and we're going to bring this down to the bottom and I'm just going to see if this is going to help our lighting situation and I have to roll up my sleeves and <laughs> like get to work. <laughs> okay, so let's bring this down. Now we're going to go through all of these again from the other side. We're going to create a loop with these and we're going to put a knot in there. like that and we're going to put two knots there's one we're going to put a second one just inspecting everything. Sometimes the thread goes around one of the beads. And these uh, hematite are really pretty. They um, they really reflect the light, so it looked like there was something going on. So I just wanted to check. Oops, make sure that's tight and that's not there. It's not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and clip that little piece of thread. And you know, I just bought these scissors. I guess I may have to um, sharpen them. And it may be that I just need to tighten the um, the screw because I'm finding it, when I first got them, they cut like so simply, like through butter. But now I'm finding it's kind of mangling the thread a bit. Let's see what we got here. And we'll try and pull that through in there. Lovely. Hit that. So now let's go through. I'm going to go through the 11 O's. And I'm going to go through the 8 O's. And we're going to add our clasp now. The. Um, bar part and I'm just kind of 
trying to position my beads so that it kind of looks like a square. But I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'm I'm very kind of particular. So we are coming out of these eight O's. So we want to pick up two eleven O's. In in her um, pattern, she suggests picking up one eight O. I'm gonna pick up two. I want to extend the um, the beading part of this a little bit and let's get our toggle uh, I want to extend it a little bit because this is a kind of an, an unusual toggle so I want to make sure there's enough space for you to slip it through now we are going to go through these two eight O's like that I still feel like we could enlarge this a bit so let's pull that all through like that and we are going to pick up two 11 O's and now we are going to come through this side let's see if you can see that this side of the 8 O's so it's going to bring the loop down and we're going to go through everything again do that to see if I can show you this on camera without my fingers being in the way and kind of pull that so that it's even on both sides probably not going to matter because it's going to get loose as we go through and then we can pull it tight but there you go is the idea I want you to see so we're going to go through these two 11 O's, these two 8 O's, and through your toggle clasp loop. I'm just going to hold on to those as I pull this through. And there, I've tightened it. So that's what it looks like. So now I'm going to go through the 8 O's and through the other 11 O's. And hang on to them, pull this tight. And we are set to go, so we're going to go through our 8 O's here. So now we're going to start working on the bracelet. We are going to go through these two 11 O's. And basically what we're doing now is we're setting up our thread to start doing the components to this bracelet. Ooh, that was not very nice. Oh, look! There's a drop of blood. <laughs> Made with love. <laughs> or contagions, whatever you want to look at it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now let's get started. So this is basically a right angle weave that we're doing. So we already have, we're going to share these two eight so we're going to create a component like this using these two 8 O's. So all we need is two 11 O's, two 8 O's, two 11 O's. And we're going to do that for seven times. So two 11's, two 8's, two 11's, and that's what we have. We are coming out of this side. We're going to go in this side. And I just hang on to that and that's what we've got. So now I am going to flip this just because it makes it easier to work with. And hang on to my thread. So now we're going to set up our thread. So we're going to go through the one side. And I'm sure most of you have done right angle weave. Here is my recommendation if you haven't. I would definitely take a look at it. I, when I started out, which is only probably six months ago, I started doing bead weaving. I um, had no idea what I was doing. And I tried different bracelet designs. I also tried, I also wanted to try things and didn't because I was so scared that I didn't know what I was doing. Isn't that funny? So I, um, I would recommend you finding a nice simple uh, 
right angle weave tutorial and working on it. So it's just so we're coming out this side. We're going to go in this side. We've picked up two 11 O's, two 8 O's, and two 11 O's. And we're going to go in through these 8 O's like that. Definitely, uh, once I figured out that a right angle weave often was the basis of other bracelet designs, I would, um, you know, sit and watch TV. I would do right angle weave and I would try different size beads. I would try pearls. I would try bicones. I would try everything and just do your own designs. And it's so nice, you could actually leave it at that with a right angle weave, depending on what beads you use. So, um, but then you can go on top of it and start adding things on top, which is really cool. I'm just, it looked a bit like this one was bigger, but it's just because it's flattened. There. Okay, so we are going to want this this way. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, two 8 O's, and two 11 O's. There we go. We're coming out this side, we're going to go in this side. And I flip it and go through, set up my thread for the next. Component and we're ready. So we have one, two, three, four. We need three more. So two eleven O's, two eight O's, two eleven O's, and we're gonna go in here. And flip it and set up our thread. Oh, let me pull that down a bit. Go through. And like that. There. So we have one, two, three, four, five, two more. I feel like um, Jane Fonda. Two more. One more. Two more. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Who remembers Jane Fonda workouts? I don't know if I've told you guys this before. If I have, I apologize for repeating myself. <laughs> but that's what happens when you get old. I, um, we had, I was here in, uh, in Ontario. I'm in Nova Scotia, but in Ontario where I went to high school, we had, um, I have to go through these. I always forget. I start talking and I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> we have to set these up for the next component. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. So two 11 O's. I'll tell you the story after this next thing here because we're going to change it up. So I need to give you. A little explanation of what I'm doing. So again, we're going to set up our thread and needle for the next step. So I am attempting to make a seven and a half in the uh, tutorial that I'm going to link for you. She does five of these um, and she made a seven inch. So this is not really an inch, but if you think on the other side of this, you're going to add two more of these. It still wouldn't be an inch, but I think with maybe with adding that extra seed bead, a few things like that, it might be somewhere between seven and seven and a half. So you definitely, as you get going on this, you might want to measure and see how that fits for you. Okay, so the next step, we are going to add two 11 O's, one bicone, two 11 O's. So that's what you have. You're coming out this side. Let's turn that. 
and you're going to go the other side of these eight O's like that. I just want to make sure that's nice and tight. Not too tight because it'll warp, bring everything out of shape. So there, that's what you want for this one. So this is, again, this is a right angle weave, so we need to set up our thread to the right position. Through the bicone. Now we are ready for the next step. So we want to create the same thing on the other side of this bicone. So we're going to do two 11 O's, two 8 O's, two 11 O's. Okay, so if you ignore the rest, we just want to and ignore the bicone, we just want to create this part here. So we're going to go through, coming out this side, we're going to go in this side here. And I do find, this is kind of the first time using my Swarovski crystals, I find they are really sharp on these thread. Okay, so this is what we have. Again, right angle weave, we got to set up our thread. So just remember that. And you know what? I still mess it up. I forget. I get talking. So let's go like that and through these eight O's. Like that. Now, this step is a little different, and I almost forgot it. And then when I started looking at the bracelet, it looked terrible, and I realized I'd missed something. So now we are going to create some rectangle boxes to put our crystals in. But to do that, we need to have something to connect. Otherwise, the boxes will look out of shape. So we're going to pick up two 8-0s. We're coming out of this side. This is kind of like a bridge stitch, I think they call it. or Yeah, bridge so we are going to do this. So we came out the one side, went in the other. So those are going to sit on top. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go through these guys so that it um, kind of secures them nicely like that. And I think I'm going to go through it a second time. I can't remember if she does it twice to kind of really make, you know, set those up that they're sitting nice and firm. Now, because we want to start working on these, we need to jump up there. Okay, so I'm going to flip this like this. Now, we are going to add, so we're going to create these rectangles. The rectangles comprise of 10 beads, but we're going to share these two. So we only need to pick up eight. Let's go ahead, pick up eight. So there's eight. I'm just going to double check that because I have, on occasion, many times picked up too many. Oh, that's so annoying. And you get past it, you're like, oh, what's wrong with this? Okay, I just flipped that again. Just makes it easier to work. So this is just kind of loose, but snug I guess. We're going to pick up an 11 0 and we're going to go through three of these beads. This is going to be the one side of our rectangle and pull it all the way through like that. Now we're going to pick up an, another 11 0 but this time we're going to go through two. That's going to be the top part and the connecting part of our And, pull that. and I'm just going to flip this to make it easier on my position. Pick up another 11 0. Now we're going to go through three beads. This is the other wall of our rectangle. And I'm just hanging on to it. And, and I pull it a bit snug, and what that does is it pops that 11 0 
in between those two. Now we need one more for this corner. So we're basically putting an 11 0 in each corner and it really does a nice job at setting everything up. So now we're just going through the two at the bottom and we are going to pull this tight. Make sure everything's I want to pull this one a little tighter, so I'm going to pull this one. In place and then just go down the line here. And then this one. And Didn't really do anything, so maybe don't do that. <laughs> don't do what I do. So there you go. You got this nice rectangle. Now we're going to skip this 11 0. We're going to go through these three 8 0s. Because again, think of this as right angle weave. So now we're going to skip that 11 0. And we're setting up our thread do the next one. Now this is the part that I messed up on a different attempt. So again we want to create a nice lovely triangle. So we need to put two pieces here. What I had done was I had created the triangles on just so they weren't separated. It makes a big difference how it looks, how it sits. So let's pick up two eight O's. So coming out this side, we're going to go in this side. And pull those tight and we're going to go through these to kind of secure them. So there like that. And then we have to go through this because we need to be through those top ones and we're going to create another rectangle so we need eight so six seven eight and I'm gonna double check yep yeah okay so we're coming out this side we're gonna go in this side and I'm gonna flip it so that's what it looks like, but we're going to straighten that out. So we're going to pick up an 11 0, and we are going to come in through these three 8 0s on the side and pull that tight. Then we're going to pick up an 11 0 and go through two 8 0s and pull that tight to pop it in. I'm going to flip my work upside down. I'm going to pick up one 11 0 and go through three like that and you see how quickly that shapes i love making shapes with beads i don't know what it is it's like so satisfying so pick up an 11 0 and we're going to put our last bead in go through those two and look at that so this is what we have so far so I am going to continue and uh, we can chat while I'm doing this so there we're going to set up our thread for the next component through these two we're going to add two so what I was saying about the, the joke about the n1 n2 for Jane Fonda workout so in Ontario, we have, um, I don't know, I don't think they have it anymore, but they used to have what they called grade 13. So after grade 12, um, they, uh, you can do grade 13. And the idea was that it was, they were really, really difficult courses. And they were meant as a preparatory for university. So if you're going to university versus college, you would take grade 13. It was mandatory, actually. I I don't know. I Yeah, I don't think you could uh, 
get out of doing it if you're going to university? Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to remember. It's been a while. It's been like over 30 years. How crazy is that? <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, we, and believe it or not, gym class was mandatory in grade 13, which I find hilarious because you're going to university the idea is there are preparatory classes for university. What do you need to know pre preparatory in phys ed, especially a high school phys ed? Like our, our um, programs were not like sports schools kind of thing where you get like amazing basketball players or hockey players or, you know, Olympians of any sort. So it just to me was kind of silly. So we had to take it as part of our curriculum. And um, by the time we got to grade 12, a lot of us had jobs and, you know, we're stressing over university and whatnot. So we, we probably weren't the nicest people to be around. <laughs> and we had a gym teacher that was so dippy. <laughs> so we used to tease her all the time. And uh, anyway, she was, she was pretty cool. She she told us if there was anything we wanted to do in gym class to let her know and we would do it. So I jokingly said, well, why don't we do the Jane Fonda workout? And I had a videotape that was an hour and a half intense, advanced Jane Fonda workout. Like it was brutal, like boot camp brutal. And um, she's like, yeah, that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> So I brought it in for class and oh my gosh, people were cursing me afterwards. It was like, it was supposed to be a joke kind of thing. And it ended up, the workout was so difficult that yeah, people were cursing me and collapsing on the floor and and the teacher couldn't finish it as well. She was a bit out of shape, which I thought was kind of weird for a gym teacher. So, but I feel like sometimes some of those courses they the teachers take positions that they don't have to do a lot and they they kind of give positions like to whoever's there like give them the option first before they actually hire somebody from outside that possibly is better skilled <laughs> at teaching that course and they do that for other courses too so I don't know, I guess she got, who knows, she could have had some experience. Again, uh, I was, I was a nice person, but you know what, I'm not, I wasn't the nice person that I am now. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And I think that is the case for most teenagers. <laughs> not their fault. It's part of the hormones and the stresses that we put on teenagers you know, you have to make a decision about the rest of your life and your hormones are going crazy. You have all the risk of pregnancy and access to drugs and alcohol and, uh, you know, people don't understand you and you're trying to figure out who you are and you're, you know, Finding out your creativity and what you're, what you stand for and stuff like that. So yeah, it's not, uh, by all means, not their fault that they're not the nicest people to be around. And I, that's a generalization, so please don't, <laughs> please don't bash me. <laughs> okay, so here's a funny story. I was talking to my mom. She's passed away now, but I was talking to my mom one time. And I uh, apologized to her for being such a bad teenager. And she's like, oh, what do you mean? I said, well, I feel like I was really bad. She's like, oh, no, you were wonderful. Oh, my gosh, I was laughing so hard. I was like, you really have some memory issues. <laughs> you don't. I used to argue with her all the time. But you know what I think it is, is, when I started working, especially in nursing, now let's talk about this. There's one, two, three, four. 
And let me see how many we need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need eight. So four more of these guys. Um, as an adult, I spent a lot of time with my mom. So, I mean, I spent a lot of time with her as a teenager too, but you know, as an adult, you think, oh, you're so busy with work and whatnot. But I spoke to her daily, uh, either on the phone or saw her. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of stuff together. And um, she was just so proud when I graduated nursing school. She was, you know, so proud and loved to share that information with people. My daughter, the nurse. But uh, so I think she was replacing those negative memories of my shenanigans as a teenager with who I was as a nurse. So, which reminds me, when I was younger, I had was supposed to be home at a certain time, and I remember. One night, it was around the um, time change, I went out with friends and I was drinking and uh, when I came home I was drunk and I was a bit manic as well, so let me make sure I'm in the right spot here. Um, so she was questioning me about the time that I was coming in at. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know if she had set a specific time she wanted me home by or whatever. But anyway, so I got into a big conversation with her about it because it was daylight savings time. The clocks were different and stuff like that. I had her so confused that she forgot she was mad at me for coming in late. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was too funny. Yeah. That was too funny. My parents were so funny. So we were allowed to have parties and organize parties with our friends. Even when we were little, we could have sleepovers and invite lots of friends and stuff like that so um i think it might have maybe my 18th birthday i organized a party and by then i had lots of friends and everybody was so excited to be coming to my party so um my mom said that what she would do is uh, she would wait and when people started coming, then she would go to our neighbors on the next street over and uh, who's her best friend and they would play cards. So they would be close by if anything came up and uh, yeah, so like totally wasn't a big deal. So, and again, actually, you know, it's interesting. So yeah, I was 18. So in Ontario, the drinking age is 19, and I got my brother to go and buy beer, and I guess my parents were okay with that. <laughs> they knew what was happening. Um, and again, they were close by, so they felt it was fine. And my friends were all my uh, older than me, so that's the other thing. They were of drinking age. So... Um, People started coming like crazy to this party. There was even my girlfriend's brother and his friends. They lived a couple of blocks away. They walked over with beers, like bottles of beer in their hands drinking. And they walked over like this. And that's like a big no-no open container in the street. They walked over to join the party. It was one of these parties that you didn't expect that many people to show up. And then, like, everybody and everybody's friends started showing up. 
So it was this massive, crazy party. So uh, I, um, you know, we're partying and having a good time. So then I hear people saying, um, no, I'm next. I'm going to play pool with Mrs. DeVoe. <laughs> That's my mom, Mrs. DeVoe. <laughs> So we had a pool table that my dad bought for $20, a really nice pool table that was in rough shape. So he fixed it up and then he paid to get it re, um, like put the felt on the top. And we had that in the basement. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And what did I say? Eight. Yeah, eight. So I need two more. I need some more of these guys. So it was so funny, these tough guys that were friends, my girlfriend's brother and his friends, were fighting over who was going to get to play pool with my mom next. And my mom was like a pool shark. I mean, it's not hard to be a pool shark when you have a pool table in your basement. And, you know, you're just, we always played cards, we played pool, we played all kinds of games, board games like crazy. So it was not a stretch for her to be really good at it. So my mom was so cool. So cool. So yeah, I thought that was so hilarious. So then um, I um, I didn't live with my parents at the time. So... <laughs> I was uh, going home and the party was still going. So I asked my mom about it. She's like, oh yeah, don't worry. Me and your dad will clean up after. And I'm like, no, no, don't clean up. I'll come back in the morning and I'll help clean up. So I went home and it, with a boyfriend at the time. And uh, the next morning... I think it was like eight or nine. I got up and we went over to my parents' house <laughs> to clean. And the house was clean. Oh, it looks like there's two here. Yeah, sometimes you pick up two by accident. Let me get rid of that. Um, so they had gotten up in the morning and had cleaned. So now this course not it went through the wrong thread here let's see if I can get one of these off and I think I'm gonna have to tie it off and add some new thread let's get that in there so uh, we got there they were getting ready to have breakfast so um, I think I might, I don't know if I have enough, let me see, to do one more square rectangle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's enough, so let's just, go back down the other way we put a knot and tie it off so um they were getting ready to have breakfast the house was already clean so i uh i i felt really bad like first of all the party in my opinion got out of control and um kind of my responsibility i probably should have stayed overnight or made plans to stay overnight my parents were like so chill. They're like, okay, how do you want your eggs? <laughs> and the guy that I was with was like, he was like Eddie Haskell. He was such a troublemaker, badass kind of thing. But when he was around my parents, he always called them Mr. and Mrs. DeVoe. <laughs> Didn't call them by their first name. And he was like, he would put on this like totally clean, uh, straight-laced guy routine, 
And I am trying not to crack up laughing because it was just absolutely ridiculous. It was so over the top. So, yeah, he was funny. So, yeah, we sat down and had breakfast. So then my dad starts to tell me what the scoop was with the party. So apparently somebody broke the banister coming down the stairs. We had like a, our stairwell was enclosed. So the banister was just attached to the wall with the special little things that you attach banisters with. Like it was just a long piece of kind of rounded wood on these kind of hinges. So it wouldn't take much to rip it off the wall. Now my dad worked in construction. So for him, it's like stuff breaks, not a big deal. <laughs> I felt terrible. Then my mom says, she goes, yeah, we couldn't find the phone. We were wondering where the phone was. Somebody had stuck the phone in the freezer. <laughs> That's the kind of party it was. And she's like, oh, I had so much fun playing pool with your friends. All the guys wanted to play pool with her. That is so funny. <laughs> I miss my mom and dad so much. Okay, I'm getting another piece here. I just do a wingspan. Fortunately, it's a bit long for the camera work because you end up seeing me pull stuff through. But hey, we're making a bracelet here. Thread this guy. I love these collapsible needles for this stuff. Now they're harder to get through 15 O's, but actually this needle is pretty small. This would probably work. I need to order a bunch more. Just uh, so let me. Actually, let me go through. Let's go through this one. Pass that 11 ohms. So I'm just going to slide my thread kind of close to the end here, like this. So everybody does this differently. I don't know if I'm doing this the right way. I'm going to hang on to that so it doesn't slide through. I am going to go through this one. So I'm, I'm basically doing the same path. So that part's not new. Okay, come through here and then I'm going to tie a knot here and then go through the others. Okay, so I'm going to tie a knot here and put that through the loop and go through. Make sure it goes over. There we go. And there's my knot. And actually, sometimes if you pull it and watch your thread, it will, you can position it there. So you don't even have to cut that little thread off. And there's your knot. So now we're going to slide our knot. I'm going to go through this one just because I don't want to pass that 11 0. So if my knot starts to come through it'll go through these beads and then secure in there so pull through and there we go and you can kind of pull it so that the knot slides in there and there now let's skip that 11 0 and we're ready to add the last one of these on And set ourselves up for the next set of eight O's. Okay. That's what I mean about all this thread at the beginning. Okay, so two here. Let's go through these guys. And we'll go through. 
Let's go through. Go through. We'll go through these guys again. I'm gonna pull this there. There we go. Now we're gonna go through this and add the next eight eightos like that. There's four. Okay, there's eight. Let's go through here. Now we're going to add an 11 0. Go through three. It's funny, we're talking about birthday parties. I have a sister that's that was born on the 1st of July which is Canada's birthday. <laughs> so she used to get the short end of the stick <laughs> because my mom would think, no, I don't have to make a cake because if we go to whatever park, they're going to have a celebration and free cake, free hot dogs and free cake. <laughs> you know, that's like necessity from having nine kids, right? It's like... <laughs> You know, seeing how you can reduce the amount of work. <laughs> it was so yeah. We used to celebrate her birthday. It was part of Canada Day. Okay, so let's go up through these guys to set this up. And. And we're going to go through these two here. So one year, I think it was for my, it was either my 15th, probably my 15th or 16th birthday. I um, I just released a video recently on, um, okay, so let me stop for a sec here. So we have, this is the part we're going to add our bicones on. So now we need to go and create this part here. Okay, so we're going to repeat this one, and then these guys. So, we need two 11 O's and a bicone. There's a, a wonky piece of bead here. It looks like a bunny rabbit. Okay, two 11 O's, a bicone, two 11 O's, like that. Coming out this side, we're going to go in this side. Yeah, so um, we had like a dinner that was as part of my birthday dinner. And uh, I don't remember what we had. But um, so I got my gifts and uh, I went to open them. <laughs> The first item I opened was a bottle of white glue. I was like, what's this for? <laughs> and my mom was like, well, I know you like to do crafts and you're always stealing your father's wood glue <laughs> from his shop. So I bought you your own bottle of glue. Isn't that great? <laughs> okay, for the second half of this, we are adding two 11 O's, two 8 O's, two 11 O's. And that will complete this component. So I was like, again, teenager, right? And yeah, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Which I think of it now, I'd be excited because you know what? I don't have any white glue in my stash. <laughs> I actually used the wood glue the other day to do something. And it's wood glue that my wife bought at the hardware store. So, yeah, my mom knew me very well. <laughs> my wife's always saying I'm stealing her tools. She'll be looking for the white glue, I'm sure, or the it's wood glue. It's a bit brown looking. 
Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is these little square components here. So we're going to share these two eightos. So now we need, let me get rid of this piece, two eleven o's, two eightos, two eleven o's. And we're gonna flip it and set ourselves up for the right angle weave, which is basically what we've been doing the whole time. So the the next present that I opened was a lumber jacket. So at the time, lumber jackets were back in style and it was like you'd wear jeans and like a uh, sleeveless kind of like a camisole top t-shirt whatever and uh, and then the lumber jacket over top so it was kind of the style it definitely was not my style but you know what it was a birthday gift and I was gonna be I was going to enjoy my birthday gift. <laughs> so my birthday's in May. I wore the crap out of that thing. I wore it everywhere. I wore it as a jacket and I wore it everywhere in the summer. I have pictures of me wearing this thing all the time, all the time. And it's funny because that style's back in again. I mean, it always comes back. It's one of those kind of rugged chic style that keeps coming back. So we're going to continue with this 211Os, 280s, 211Os, right angle weave for a total. Let me see. What did I say? Seven? Yeah, seven. So you're going to go through this, get ready for the next component. Yeah, that was funny. I think my mom was a bit overwhelmed at that point. Um, I'm trying to think. I think my dad was home by then. So my dad had a serious accident. He worked on construction, did like metal siding on buildings, but he also did other jobs. So he worked all over Ontario and other provinces. He's worked in the States on big jobs. Um, so he um, fell off a scaffold uh, 25 floors, I think. And so he could have died. He was in rough shape. He fractured his pelvis in 21 places. Um, but once they got him back, you know, through the whole rehab, he walked with a brace on his uh, calf. It went into his shoe. So, you know, you sit your foot into it and then it went up his calf and then you put your shoe on. And, um, yeah, now he walked with a limp, but uh, he still worked like crazy. He wasn't working, working, but he worked at home and did stuff. So he received a pension. But uh, so he was home by then. And there were still a few of us living at home, so my, me and my younger sister, and then uh, I had an older brother that had two kids that lived with us. Six, one more, and I had um, my one of my sisters worked in film and television as a fashion designer, so um, they worked nights. Oh, I need to go through these guys her and her husband 
worked night shift. He worked, he was a camera operator. And um, so there was nobody home with the baby. So we would take care of the baby. So the baby basically lived with us during the week and then on the weekends when they were done work. What did I do here? Um, that was not what I was supposed to do. Oh, don't you love it when it happens? <laughs> Go through the threads. <laughs> okay. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I just put my beads on here. Yeah, so we, there was a bunch of people living in the house. We had a huge house, so it wasn't a big deal. But, uh, so my brother, his two kids were five and seven, I think, or six and seven. And then my niece was like six months old. So, <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, we had, we had fun with the kids in the house, right? But, um, so my niece, her name was Billy Jo. Um, oh, this is a funny story. <laughs> it's a good thing my mom's not here because <laughs> she would be embarrassed by it. So she used to come home from bingo at night and she used to wear pantyhose. Oh my gosh, she still wore pantyhose. So she would wear pantyhose and she'd be walking down the hall and she would take her pantyhose off as she's coming down the hall, coming into the house, right? And me and my sister Sylvia would bug her all the time and tease her and say, oh my gosh, can I get a room, get undressed, right? She was just trying to feel comfortable when she was home. So, uh, yeah. Actually, we could probably add this guy here now. Let's do that. So, and we'll do the same. Oh, and you know what? I saw Gina, or Stephanie from Brown's Pony. She Because this will sit this way if I add it. She added a jump ring so that it sits this way. So let's do that. Now, she mentioned about using a locking jump ring. Because sometimes your thread will go through the hole, like the little gap that's there. And But I don't have any of those. So we'll just use this. Tools. I've got some teeny tiny silver ones. I'll take a few out in case one gets messed up. So um, when my mom would do that, my sister and I would start to sing like the music of like a strip tease <laughs> as she was doing it. And my niece would be in her playpen. She'd start dancing to it. So we would get her to wiggle her butt. Imagine a six year old, six month old baby. And she's in the playpen and she's wiggling her butt to music that we're making. So, let's see if that's enough there. Hopefully the thread won't go through that. So, we would say, we would sing, da na 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 da na 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 And my niece would be like shaking her butt back and forth, side to side, right? So one time my sister Carmel was coming to pick her up and uh, I don't know why we were, we were, I think we were just playing with my niece and we started doing that na 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 and my niece started wiggling her butt and my sister's like, oh my gosh, that's why she does that. <laughs> so apparently she's at home wiggling her butt from side to side oh gosh it was so funny she's like, my sister's like don't show her that stuff I'm like, it's just it's harmless it's funny <laughs> More like it. so look that's awesome oh my gosh
Thank you, Stephanie, for that lovely. So we're just going to go through. So we basically did the same thing. Two 11 O's. I did two 8 O's because I wanted to make sure. And I'm just going to pull this tight. The other ones look a bit loose. There we go. So two. And then we're going to go through everything again. So through these two. Let me hold it there. Through these two, these two, and through the jump ring. Just like that. Then on the other side of the jump ring, we're going to go through the eight O's and through the two. 11 O's, just like that, and through here, and I'm going to put a knot, um, and maybe I'll put the knot further down. I don't like to put my knots in um, small beads in case I need to go through it. So. And actually, I am going to bring my thread up to these guys, and we're going to add our crystals. So let me make sure I have enough time here. That should be fine. So we kind of have to weave back and forth. And what this will do, too, is trying to shape our components as well. Just weave up and down, side to side. And take these two up. So you can see it's really helping these shape up. Let me pop those down. These two, down these guys, oh. So I just pulled it a bit and it popped where it needed to be. I, I feel like this one could be a little better. So if I had a criticism, this is the only part that I would, I feel like it needs to be a little more structured and I don't know how to get it there. And I think to be fair, part of it is my tension is probably still too tight. And it kind of reminds me of um, doing the netting. I find the netting is a bit wonky when you're doing netting style bracelets. Um, but once you add a bead to it, it actually, and I'm wondering if I go like this, if this would make it nicer. I'm going to try it. There. Okay, so now we are getting ready to add our bicone. Yay! This is almost done. It'll be done once the last bicone goes on because we've already got the clasp on. How is that? I kind of like that idea of doing your clasp as part of it. So now we need, I believe, an 11 -0. Let me double check this. No, you know what? She doesn't put... So we'll try it her way and then I'll show you something different. 
So you know what? I feel like we need to take this as our middle bead. So take this as our middle bead. Um, so that you can see that it's an actual flower. So you're going to pick up a bicone, an 11 -0 and a bicone. We're coming out this side here. We're going to go in the other side of these two. Okay. And so there they are. Now we are going to take our thread and go through these three. Sorry, guys. These three of that same component. And we're going to go through these two as well. There, like that. Okay, now we're going to pick up one bicone and then we're going to use this as our common seed bead. So this is the part where I was thinking maybe another seed bead on each corner. We'll see. Now we're going to pick up uh, another bicone and we're going to go through these two eightos. We're going to pull it tight. There's your flower. Oh wow. Oh my god, these are amazing. Yeah, I'm glad I used the the dark. Wowzer. I don't see any need to put that other C bead there. You could. So let's continue. So now we need to go to the next one. Just bring our thread over. That is beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, a bicone, a seed bead, a bicone. We are coming out of this side of the two eightos, and we are going to go into the other side of it. Like that. And we're going to go through these three, skip that 11 0 in the corner. And I'm just noticing these hematite. Oh, you know what it is? These uh, turquoise are reflecting light onto the hematite. That is incredible. It looks like this deep blue. That is so wild. So we'll pick up. Oh, let's go through these guys. So we're skipping that 11 0. So we're going through these guys because otherwise, the next bicone we pick up might sit on the edge instead of down the middle. And I'm going to move these over here so I don't keep moving my hand. So pick up a bicone. Go through your 11 0 seed bead. Oh. And pick up another bicone and go through these two eightos. Wow, this uh, these are tight now that I've gone through it so many times. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have gone through it so many times. So kind of jiggle your bicones there and pull it tight so that they're nicely popped onto that seed bead. Look at that. These are gorgeous. So now we're going to go through down to the next element. Pick up two bike or uh, 
a bicone, a seed bead, a bicone, like that, and go through these guys again. And go up through these guys. Yeah, I just won't go through all of them at once. There we go. And through these two. One went through easy. I probably didn't go through it as many times. I'll have to remember that the next time I make this. So we need a bicone. Take, go through that common seed bead. And one more bicone. And go through these two. Here. Pull it tight. Kind of jiggle them into position. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how gorgeous these are. Wowzer. So I'll go through these two. Pick up an 11 0, or sorry, a bicone, 11 0, and a bicone. Go through those two. So you're coming out this side, we're going to go in this side. And now we're going to go through these three. Yeah, these ones are a little easier to go through. And these two. And we're going to pick up a bicone. And another bicone. Pull this tight and kind of move them around. They will eventually pop so that they're sitting flush to each other. Something like that. So now we're going to go through these two. I don't know if you can see that these little sparks of blue light. That's the reflection of the bicone. That's how gorgeous these bicones are. If you get a chance to purchase some turquoise double AB bicones, oh my gosh, I don't know what they did to them. Oh, I jumped ahead of myself here. I need a bicone, an 11 -0. A bicone, and then so we're coming out this side. We're going to go in this side like that. Go through these three. So this was my fifth attempt at this video <laughs> and okay pick up a bicone um, I was trying to do it so that I did it all in one piece so it's amazing because again I still haven't figured out the pause function and I think what I'm going to do so this video will probably be you will probably see it um, uh, okay, so this is what I don't want you to do. So I didn't go through these two here. And if you see, it's off to the side, the thread. So let's, let's uh, fix that. It may not make a huge difference, but you might see it sitting differently. Take 
kind of off. Go through these two. Okay, now we need our bike home. So, um, yeah, between interruptions and the last, actually, this is probably six. The last interruption was um, the oral surgeon calling with a cancellation. I'm so excited. So I will be having my tooth extracted. And I was surprised they asked if I wanted um, IV sedation. So I said yes. I kind of wasn't sure. Things like that I like to discuss with my wife. She's the one that's going to be taking care of me after. And she was not available. So I mentioned that the last time I had a tooth extracted in the dentist's office, they needed seven needles to sedate or to, um, for the pain and it still didn't work. I was in excruciating pain. It was traumatizing. They couldn't get the tooth out. Look, it was ridiculous. So this tooth actually has a post, which is like a screw and it has, um, you know, it was a root canal. So I suspect it's not going to be easy to get out. So you know what? Put me to sleep, please. It scares me, the whole idea of being put to sleep. But oh, I see, I almost did it again. It's your fault. You're distracting me with your stories. Oh, wait, they're my stories. Her story. I love when they say that. Change the pronoun. Yes, we still live in a man's world, ladies. We have to step up and revolt. <laughs> so, yeah, so they, um, you know, I told her the story. And, of course, she's being so professional. She didn't say anything, right? It's like, I can't make the decision for you. I'm sure that's what she's thinking, right? Like, Please just tell me what to do. I'm terrible for making decisions. And I don't know how I got through my whole life with, and you know, my work career, I was good at making decisions. So it's funny, eh? I think it's just, I don't know, as you get older, you get, you start to, and maybe because I was so good at making decisions, part of the decision making process is um, reviewing all the options and what the outcomes for each of those options would be and then making a decision on that basis so you know having uh, somebody somebody on the phone um, wanting me to decide right away but so anyway I did and Oh, I gotta get going. So, um, there is the bracelet. That's what it's gonna look like. There we go. So, thank you for joining me, and you will see a picture on at the beginning of this video showing the full bracelet. But you get the idea. Take care, everyone. Bye.